שלום עליכם, חג שמח. This is a very, very special night. For me it's a special night and for anyone who been blessed with the, the deep the deep, deep, deep connection to this righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev was, and in our hearts until today, a flaming fire of passion to, to give everything back to Hashem, to connect ourselves to the Creator with all our hearts, and there's no wonder why he passed away in this unique and special and most holy and blessed night that is the fourth night of Sukkot. That in that night we are inviting and calling this leader of our nation, Moshe Rabbeinu, to be our guest in our sukkah. And in that night when Moshe Rabbeinu's soul is invited and called to our sukkah and we believe that he is with us and holding our hands and blessing the depth of our soul with his holy presence, in that night the soul of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is rising and coming back to its source, to the Creator. And he passed away in that night. And the story of those last hours of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev in this world was described by his main student, Rabbi Natan of Breslev, in such a deep and emotional way every look that Rabbi Nachman looked at him every movement he described with with love and and with in such a poetic and and blessed way it's it's uh, only someone that really know and read and learned about Rabbi Nachman of Westlev and and finds Rabbi Nachman of Breslev as a source of inspiration and as a, as a source of, of, of purity and holiness in, in this world for us. The orphans and the abandoned children, the forgotten children of the last generation, for us, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev means so much and we can never, never forget how much we received from him and how much blessings we are until today and gaining from his Torah, from his wisdom and of course from, from his holy work that no one can even understand how deep it went and how meaningful it is until today for us. I wanted to read for you a Torah in Likute Moran I will not going to read all this Torah, but I'll read a few parts and of course going to translate it just to, to give us an understanding of how important it was for Rabbi Nachman of Breslev to pass the torch of faith of Emunah to the next generation. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is telling us in Torah 5, in the second part of Likute Moran, that the main thing is the faith, Haikaru Emunah. And every person should look inside of himself how he can strengthen himself with faith. Because you have people who suffer from horrible, horrible illnesses and, 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 and sicknesses and they have hor they've been hit in a horrible way. Like they're suffering in a, in a great way, in a horrible way. And they suffer their illnesses only because they're, they lost their faith. Rabbi Nachman is revealing to us here a huge secret. 
He's telling us the reason why those people who are so sick, who are suffering badly, they're suffering so much only because the, the faith fell from their hands. Many, many people can testify that they passed huge challenges in life by the power of faith. It means that when they were strong to believe in the goodness of the Creator and that everything that they go through in life is supervised by Hashem and that even if something happened to them, it's coming for a purpose and there is someone who guides and aims every single thing in your life for a certain purpose, to bring you to a certain um, place for sparks elevation, for, for, for completion, for corrections, with a purpose. That faith that the person is holding himself attached to gives him a lot of strength to deal with the difficulties and with the challenges in life. And you can see people who does not have that faith and they can find themselves losing their minds because of simple things, like even small things can make them lose their minds completely and being so lost and confused and what I'm going to do, I lost my job, I lost my this, I lost my that. I, and, and like certain things that are like, okay, I understand you lost your job, but you can find another job. Like you can, you can pray for that. Let's do it, Buddha Dut on that. Let's think what we can do. Maybe there is something that you can do. Maybe there are like plenty of, of solutions for that problem. But because that for the person that is far from faith, the world looks like, like chaos, like there's... There is no order, there is no supervision for him in his eyes. That's what he sees. He cannot see anything. He cannot find any wisdom, any, any purpose, any reason to live. Why? Because he is far from faith. And that's what makes him suffer. Not the fact that he lost his job or lost his money or lost something. Only because that he cannot figure out why it's happening to him. Why in the world I need to suffer so much? Why things are not coming like they should? Why, why, why? All those questions are bringing the person to horrible grief, to horrible pain. And this is what Rabbi Nachman is talking about. That it's written that the main pain of a person is coming to him because that the faith fell away from him. He lost his faith. And those are coming because of that defect in faith. And by the fact that faith is disappearing from the person's, from the person's life, even the medicines that could have healed him, and the prayers that could have saved him, and even merits and, and privilege of his ancestors that usually protects the person from heaven, they cannot heal him in heaven there is a concept that is called Siata Dishmaya. Siata Dishmaya means support from heaven, help from heaven. And many people feel that thing, that they have help from heaven in certain situations. For an example, even simple situations, it doesn't have to be huge things. For an example, you want to pay in the grocery store and you, you need a... a a dime or, or, or a quarter and you put your hand into your pocket and you just pick out the right coin like you you have 10 coins over there and you just pick the right one it's called siata dishmaya you have been helped now from heaven it could have take you five minutes you know sometimes you can look for your glasses and they're on your forehead where's my glasses where's my glasses like i'm looking for my glasses for hours like where's my glasses yeah, here they are. When they're not assisting you from heaven, you can look for your glasses like that. Where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? And you can't find them. Why you can't find them? Because from heaven, they're blocking you. When they are supporting and helping you, assisting you from heaven, then things in life goes easily. Now, what does it mean that you have help from heaven? It means that your ancestors or certain holy souls that are attached to you in the roots of your soul, that are deeply connected and attached to you in heaven, 
they are assisting you. They're standing in prayer and they are assisting you from above. Now, when a person does not have faith, the, the ability, the authority for those, um, the permission for those souls to assist you is gone. They cannot access you. When a person, like the verse is saying, Ish emunot rav brachot. When the person has a lot of faith, then he will have many, many blessings in his life. Everything that he will do, that he will think, that he will th- hope for, he will see the hand of Hashem. He will see the si'ata dishmaya, the support and the help, the assistance from heaven in everything he's doing. He wants to call someone and that person just calls him. He wants to read something, he opens the book in the same page that he was like the same halakha, the same thing that he is topic that he was searching for. Oh, he just found it. Sometimes you don't even pay attention. Like, oh, okay, I'm gonna open the book. Oh, oh, here it is, and you just like read it. No, it's not simple. Why did you open the page in that place? The Creator made you, helped you. There, you have support and help from heaven to assist you. Now it all depends in the faith of a person. So when a person has faith, so. Things are going much smoother than usually. But when the person is losing his faith, so then even medications and potions and prayers and that help from heaven that could have assist, assist him is, God forbid, gone and cannot heal him, cannot help him. And then Rabbi Nachman is explaining because all the medications are coming by different kinds of grass and they're growing by the faith what does it mean you know you have a certain grass that is good for healing cough there is a different kind of 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 grass that is good for your ears for your eyes potions you know in ancient uh, cultures people really once knew how to, how to make medications. Also today, you have some people that are able, that have certain access to this kind of wisdom, not plenty as, as we wish, as we need to have, but we know that that knowledge exists in, in the creation somehow. In the future to come, and I said it many times, you, sometimes you don't know what is healing you and what is, is making the person sick, but for an example you walk in the street and you have a certain desire for an apple you just like you you sat on the on the bus and you see someone biting a green apple and you you hear the noise of that bite of that person in that green apple and it wakes up all your senses like now you must buy put your hand on a green apple and like you don't know even why and what's the purpose and what's the reason for that, but you just heard that biting voice in the apple, it woke you up. And you must put your hand on that green apple. And you're going to go and going to buy that green apple in the end of that day. And you're going to eat it and you're going to be so happy. And you don't know, you don't have a clue what Hashem did with you. You don't have a, a tiny understanding of how deep Things are going in life for you. How amazing is Hashem and how Hashem now made you hear that person eating his apple and that he will sit in a certain position that you'll be able to recognize the exact same fruit that he's eating for you to develop that desire for that fruit because in that fruit, but not in every apple, not in any apple, in that specific apple that you put your hand on. Because when you go to that store and you see over there on the shelf 20 different green apples and you're looking and, oh, you know, I'll take that one. There is no seen and simple reason why you picked that specific apple. And sometimes you take that apple and then you say, no, I'm not going to take that one. I'm just going to take that one. There are certain sparks there are particles of souls, of spirits that are trapped, that are treasured inside that apple. Inside the fibers, inside the sugar cells, inside the peel, inside the body, inside the grains, inside the fruit. 
And those sparks are needed for your body's healing, for your recovering, for some um, processes that must, must be completed by that apple. And this is why we're saying the blessings for the food. This is why you say, and you say, and you have blessings in the beginning of eating, and in the end, after eating, and before drinking, and after drinking, you have certain blessings, and every blessing is explaining and revealing deep knowledge that attached to your healing, to the needs of your body. And you don't see the siata dishmaya. You don't see the guiding hand from above that is assisting you to put your hand on the right apple in the right time. That that apple is needed for you and you don't have a clue and you don't have no understanding of how many times the Creator saved you from horrible sicknesses, from horrible failures, by giving you pulses of energy, of positive sparks, that will elevate your soul, that will give you the power to uplift yourself above certain obstacles, that you will not fail, spiritual, emotional, physical, deep, deep things that you could never imagine. You grab that apple and you eat that apple and suddenly you feel happy. And then something that could have bothered you and could have hurt your feelings now is passing aside of you and you don't pay attention to it because you're happy. You and your apple. You're just walking in the street, holding your apple, smiling to the world, and you're all good, busy with your apple. And that apple just saved your life from a running train, from a running truck, from, a, from, 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 from an argument with a person, from a certain illness, from a certain weakness, from a failure, from, from, from a negative voice that you could pay attention to if, if your mind wouldn't be so focused on that apple right now. Those are deep things that the person that does not have faith will never see, will never recognize in life. But people that has faith will see that blessing. So Rabbi Nachman is attaching the fact that the medicines are growing from the ground, in the grass, in the fruits, in the vegetables, in, in the wheat. And he's attaching it to the faith. And he's explaining that, like that our sages said in the Gemara Masechet Tanit, that rain is coming because of faith. When there is faith, so rain is coming. It's, like I said, it's a long Torah and it's deep, it's deep. Like, please, Hashem, let us sit and learn all the Likute Moran that, that, that will have complete days, long days of us being able to sit and learn and read and translate and think about the Holy Torah. But like we said, let's try to focus on, on the greatness of, of the righteous ones of Rabbi Nachman, of Moshe Rabbeinu, that this day is dedicated for those pillars, the right pillar and the left pillar, of, of our temple and those amazing, amazing um, giants that illuminate the world. Let's, let's talk about them. So Rabbi Nachman is explaining to us in this Torah that the healing is coming because of the rain. Okay, so the rain is coming by the merit of faith and then by the faith the rain is being is blessed and the blessing of the rain is growing those those um, crops those fruits and veg vegetables and 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 all the seeds and all the grass and they are holding inside of them the healing that is needed for us okay all those things that are our blessings now Rabbi Nachman is explaining that except from that um, source of watering the grass that is the rain there is another source and what is that source it's an inner source that the person is pulling out buckets of water from the well bringing out water from an inner well not the water that are coming from above from the sky and watering the ground just that the farmer himself is watering his fields his seeds, his plants, with water that he 
brought out from his own well and to reveal those this kind of water and Rabbi Nachman is explaining here in that part in, in part 3 in this Torah number 5 in the second part of Likutei Moran that those buckets of water are advice those are different advice that a person can find in his own life that a person is standing in a certain situation and he needs to find an advice. He doesn't know what to do. He has two options. He has two ways. He needs to get an advice. And who is he gonna who he gonna call? Ghostbusters, he cannot call them. They're not available anymore. That's it. It's an old video. You cannot call them. They're not available. So who he gonna call? He needs to call someone. So you need to call Hashem. How you call Hashem? You need to pray from your heart. How do you pray from your heart? You bring out the water of, of your spirit, the, the, uh, the spirit of the person that comes out in the words of your prayer is equal to water. Like the verse is saying, Shibchi kamayim libech nochach pnei Hashem. Pour your heart like water in front of God, in front of Hashem. You pray, you call Hashem. You call Hashem by revealing the spiritual water of your spirit. And that is the way that you reveal the advice, that you pull out those buckets of water, that you pray and you ask Hashem, Hashem, what should I do? Please give me the right advice. I'm, I'm just giving you a, 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 a practical example for you to see how to pray. You stand in a situation, you don't know what to do. You just need to break down your thoughts and your feelings and your needs into words and just to express it. Please Hashem, Father in Heaven, I need your help, I need your support, I need your advice. Let me know what is the right way. How should I choose? What should I choose? What should I say? Now in this situation, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Please, let me know what should I say? What should I do? In what way I should, I should act? Should I react right now? Maybe I should think about it. Let me know what should I do. In every situation in life, okay, should I say what I think? Maybe I should hold myself for another minute. Maybe I will let them complete their words. Maybe I will listen fully to what they have to say. Maybe it's time for me to listen. Maybe it's time... All those thoughts that you have with yourself, when you express them in prayer, by that you are revealing the deep, deep water of your spirit and you're finding the right advice. And Rabbi Nachman is saying to us, for that a person should be a huge person, a person of deep understandings. Like the verse is saying, Maim Amukim, deep, deep water, is the advice in the heart of a person. And the next part of that verse, uh, the advice, so the, the first part, part is saying, deep water is the advice in the heart of a person. And who is the one that can bring those buckets out? not A man of deep understandings, he will be the one to know how to bring that water out. You can be that person. And how can you be that person? Only by getting used to individual prayer. That you are praying and praying on daily basis. That you dedicate a certain time every day of your life to talk to the Creator by the merit of the Righteous Ones. Even 10 minutes, even 20 minutes, you go to a quiet place and you talk to Hashem. You talk to the Creator about the things that are troubling you, the things that are bothering you, the things that makes you feel uncomfortable, the things that makes you feel lost and, and, and confused and, 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 and weak. And you talk about them with Hashem. And you say to Hashem, please Hashem, I need your help, I need your support, I need strength, I need power to stand in those challenges those waves of the sea, of the ocean, that never ends, that never stops. Please, help me. Give me the power, the motivation, the, 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 the knowledge, the strength, 
the desire to continue, the passion to succeed, never to fall to sadness, never to fall to despair, never to fall to, 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 to negative way of thinking about my life. Let me always be positive, always be honest, to be a person of truth, to be a person who is able to confront the truth and not to be ever scared of the truth, always to choose the truth and to admit the truth and to choose you to know that you are the truth and that the truth is, is you and to attach myself to you by being a person of truth. Simple prayers, that is the deepest advice that a person can find, to be honest. This is the blessing that is growing out of the deep connection to the real righteous ones who were always the most simple people of their generation. Always, always, always. May the blessing and memory of those pillars of light and fire, holy flaming fire, Abinahon of Westland and the holy, holy shepherd, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, Moses, our, our main rabbi, main redeemer, main savior, may their merit protect us all. And we'll mention small thing that is attaching those two holy, amazing leaders of our nation. And there is a verse that Moses said, it's written in the Bible, that when the nation of Israel sinned, so Moses looked for ways how to, to cancel the decree in front of heaven's court. And he went and started to argue and to fight and to to claim for, for the merit of the nation of Israel. And he said to Hashem, I, I'm asking you to forgive them, and if you're not going to forgive them, so erase me from the book that you wrote. We can see that that was the deepest point, that Moses was ready to throw everything, everything that he dedicated his life for, all his work to bring down the Bible, to write down and to hand the Bible to the nation of Israel, to redeem them. Like he gave us the Torah, the Torah named after him, Torah Moshe. And now for the sake of Israel, he's saying to Hashem, and if not, if you're not going to save them, if you're not going to forgive them, erase me from the book that you wrote. Mechenina misifrecha asher katavta. Mechenina and he's saying that in those words, and if not, so first of all he asked, please save them, please forgive them, and if not, erase me from the book that you wrote. Those letters of, of that, that are written in that verse, if you read them from the end to the beginning, they are composing the words Ani Nachman. I am Nachman. Ve'im Ain. If you write those words, Ve'im Ain. Mechenina. Those same letters from the end to the beginning are writing the two words. Ani Nachman. I am Nachman. They have a point of attachment in their souls that they are both holding in that point of saying to Hashem, and if not, erase me from the book that you wrote. Also, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev was serving the Creator with that intention. From that deepest and in, most inner point of his soul, that he was ready to sacrifice and to erase himself, to nullify himself completely for the sake of his nation, of the nation of Israel, for the sake of the whole world. He was ready to lose everything, everything, for the sake of his people, for the sake of us, for us to be happy, for us to be healthy, for us to be forgiven, for us to be blessed. May their memory be a blessing in our hearts and in the hearts of all our loved ones always. Amen. Can you hear us? Thank you.
יעצור אותי מלהגיע. 